Uh, good morning, if you'll start with me um, with a bit of prayer um, before, before we pray. Uh, uh, tomorrow's Labor Day, uh, as I think most everyone here knows, and I wanted today's sermon to be uh, one about labor, one about um, maybe maybe it's workers' rights, uh, labor rights, uh, labor in faith, somewhere in that zone, but the scriptures today just didn't quite work out in that general favor. Um, it would have been trying to uh, fit the, the, the triangle block through the circle in every children's toy. Uh, it would, just wouldn't fit. So uh, if you'll join me this morning in a small prayer for labor, for workers' rights, for, uh, for workers and for employers uh, to celebrate Labor Day tomorrow, um, I'd be very appreciative. So, God, uh, we thank you for allowing us to be gathered here today. Uh, we want to thank you, God, for giving the world, the, the universe, labor. We want to thank you for giving people the desire to work, the desire to fulfill their needs. Uh, we pray that those who seek work find it. We pray that those who have work keep it. And we pray that those who uh, employ continue to be able to employ. We pray that those who are struggling uh, in their jobs can find comfort. That those who are fighting for uh, better opportunities within their jobs, uh, better rights, and to have those rights fulfilled. We pray for those uh, employers that are working to make their jobs better, that they may have their wishes fulfilled. We pray that those who are celebrating tomorrow, who uh, truly understand the meaning of Labor Day, truly seek all the glory that you give them. God, bless tomorrow, bless today, and bless all workers who seek your name. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, so when I was in college, I went on mission trips every spring break. That was what I did. It was what I, I, I enjoyed doing, right? And it wasn't your typical spring break trip, right? You know, you think of your typical spring break trip, you think of, um, you know, MTV spring break, Florida, uh, Cancun, Mexico, um, anywhere with a beach, and I was living in the dorms, and I was living across the hall from these uh, two you know, average college student guys. And we were talking about our spring breaks, and it was coming up in the next coming week. And I asked them, what are they doing for spring break? And they, they, looked, and they, they looked at me, and they were like, we're going to Mexico! Yeah! And I was like, oh, that's no way. I'm going to Mexico, too. And I was like, oh, it's going to be so fun, right? Because I thought that they were part of the mission trip going because I had missed some of the meetings and I, I wasn't, pretty, you, know, you know, I was being a bad uh, meeting person. Um, and so I, I thought they were going to the same place as me and they were like, and they were like, oh man, you're going, you're going to the beach too? And I was like, I, I mean, hold on, I think we're going to different places. Um, you're not going to uh, La Rosa de Flor? And he's like, no. And I was like, no, no, we're, we're going to the beach. I was like, oh, so, so what, are you, what are you doing for spring break? And they're like, oh, we're gonna hit the beach. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna get our tan on. We're gonna get, we're gonna see babes. We're gonna, we're gonna go clubbing. It's gonna be the best week ever. And I was like, oh, that, that, that sounds fun. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds super fun. And they're like, well, Brad, what are you doing? And I was like, you know, similar, similar. Um, you know, just, you know, Teaching children how to read, uh, <laughs> building the pavilion for a school who desperately needs one. You know, just, just you know, you know, beaches, babes. You know, I, I was, I was a little bit ashamed in that moment, right? Because it was, they, they, it was, they were so excited uh, about going to the beaches and, and clubbing and, and the bars and and, and the babes. And I was sitting there and I was like, I was like, I don't feel cool in this moment, right? I don't feel. Cool, right? I felt in that moment a bit of a loser, right? So fast forward into the into spring break week. I'm down. Uh, I'm working, and we are building this um, concrete pavilion for this school, this this high school in the middle of nowhere, 
you know, dirt floors in the school. Uh, the school board has, um, you know, one chalkboard with 300 students. Uh, we are building uh, a concrete pavilion for, you know, outdoor use uh, classes, um, you know, after school programs, anything and everything that is going to be used for the pavilion. And we're also teaching uh, English classes, and we are teaching uh, very small children how to read with uh, a bibliobus program that they're doing, and we're doing all these incredible things. And I, I make the mistake, right, of getting on my Facebook when I'm in, uh, in Mexico, and I see my, my, you know, my neighbors from across the hall, I see their pictures from Mexico. And, and they are exactly what they told me they were going to do. They were on the beaches, they were in the bars, they were clubbing, hanging out with, with babes on the beaches, and well, if I can be truthful, every single one of their pictures had uh, my neighbor going like this. Eh. Doesn't matter if uh, he was on the beach, he was in the club, he's like, eh. And so, and he had the little hashtag on, on the Facebook that said, uh, if you're not here, you're not cool. If you're not here, you're not cool. So, and I was looking at that and I, I felt kind of back to that moment that I felt, I was like, Man, right? Oh, that looks so fun. I just built a pavilion. Uh, so I, was kind of th- I kind of got thinking about it, and I was like, you know, I've had like one of the best weeks of my life. You know, who cares what, if they're having fun doing what they're doing? I had so much fun doing what I'm doing. This is, this is, you know, it's not the cool thing, right? But I had more fun helping these individuals than... I'm sure that they might have had it. I, I mean, I'm not 100% for sure. So I decided that I would, I would Facebook him back, and I, I would send a picture on my Facebook, and I'd tag him in it. And so we, we got the pavilion up, and we got it set up, and so I got my, like, my crew and a bunch of the students there. We, we got to the pavilion, and we took a picture, and I was like, hey! Because, I mean, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that he saw I noticed that I was doing it right for him, so I was like, you know, and I, and I tagged it, right? And I tagged it, you know, if you're here, you're a loser. So, I, and I kind of got thinking about that this morning when I was looking at the scripture uh, in Matthew 16. Uh, it it kind of gives an idea of Jesus and what he's talking about. So we kind of like look at the first half of this. Because Jesus is talking about to his disciples that he has to go to Jerusalem and basically not have a very good time. <laughs> uh, he has to go and he has to get, uh, he has to have suffering, he has to be humiliated, he has to be, has to carry his cross through the town and be heckled by the priests, the scribes, and eventually has to be killed. Right? And this isn't a very glorious thing to do. Right? And this, this, is, this is humiliating, this is, this is straight up just bad mamma jamma stuff. And Peter says to him, God, why are you doing that? That's not cool. That's not, that's not cool, God. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not cool, JC. You know, that, that, I mean, I hang out with you. I don't want my rep going bad. He basically says, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. And Jesus says to him, uh, you know, well, for he says, get, get behind me, Satan. But in, in layman's room, he says, don't give me that what's cool. I got to do this because I got to do this. This is what's good. This is what's right. This is what's needed. Sometimes I'm okay with being a loser. <laughs> it means this. See, Jesus is here saying that human things, human uh, ideas of cool, human ideas of, of what's right don't apply to Christianity. It's divine things that make him who he is. He doesn't care about being cool. Jesus doesn't care about being, you know, liked. He cares about doing what's right. He cares about, you know, helping others, doing what he came here to do. And then we move forward into uh, 24 through 28 of verse 16, or chapter 16. And we see that Jesus told his disciples that if anyone to become my followers, if anybody wants to not be cool, if anyone wants to maybe just be a loser, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. Now, have you ever seen anybody carry a, a, a victory cup around? Uh, uh, you know, I, I used to work 
uh, in Chicago last summer. I, I worked for this, um, this bar. I was a bouncer, uh, which makes sense. I'm giant, and so you would, you, that's, they saw me, and they were like, do you want a job? Uh, that's actually a true story. So uh, I used to work at this bar as a bouncer, and this was right after the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. And they were going on this victory tour around Chicago, right? And they stopped at the bar right next to us um, in, in downtown Chicago. But the place was so packed. There was 1,500 people on this block, just a single block. And I was working the door, and they couldn't park in front of the bar that they were going into because there were just so many people. So they had to park in front of uh, the bar that I was working at. And we had to create a little path for them to get from our place to, to the next bar over. And what happened was is, you know, people are running everywhere, but they come out, and it's, it's most of the Blackhawk team, and they're carrying the Stanley Cup. And they hold it above their head, and they're carrying it. You could hear the, chow, like the crowd just chattering, going crazy. Ah, ah, I love you. Ah, this, I, I helped you win. I, did you hear me cheering? That was me. But they, it, it was a crazy moment, right? It was this, this thing that, I, I was kind of sat there and wondered today that if, if I was like, how different would that have been when, cross, uh, when uh, Jesus carried his cross through the town? I don't think there would have been uh, a mass gathering in that such certain way. You know, it would be more of like, boo, boo, I hate you. Not yay, yay, your win is our win. No one was, was there with Christ in the crowd going, yeah, yeah. It was more of a, it was not that kind of crowd. It, it, was, it was definitely a crowd, but there was not a crowd cheering on Christ as he was carrying his cross through the town. Because, uh, I was not because, but um, when we, oh, sorry, I blanked on my, give me a second. Uh, see, Jesus says that if you want to be like him. If you want to not care about these worldly things, you've got to carry your own cross to the town. You've got to have that not cool like attitude. You sometimes got to be that loser. But he says that when you do that, you stop losing, uh, you stop caring about the worldly things is when you actually become the winner in life. Uh, see, Jesus doesn't care about the, the worldly things, but cares about how you carried your cross in life. He cares how you uh, really care about other people, how you uh, want to help other people. It doesn't care about how, you know, your spring break trip to Cancun or, or your spring break trip to the beach. It cares about how you help other people, how you care about other people. Uh, and, that's, and that's very central in the ideas that are presented in verses 25 through 26 where it says that, you know, for those who want to save their life, they have to lose it. Those who lose their life, will, for my sake, will find it. Those who gain profit from uh, it, they gain from the whole world, but they forget their life, that they forfeit their life. See, Jesus is saying is that uh, if you want to actually have this life, this great life, this Christ-filled life, you've got to become the loser of life. You can't be this great winner all the time. You, you can't worry about an egotistical, like, I'm winning in life. I'm the best. As Charlie Sheen, sa Charlie Sheen says, I'm winning. It, sometimes you've got to care about the, the loser aspects of life. Do something that, that society says are loser-like things. And, and that's kind of portrayed in, in Romans 12, as we see, uh, a life that's lived in a loser life mentality, or in, in a Christian winning, I guess you could say, is let, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, all, all of that. That just shows what a life in Christ, carrying a cross is like. What y your life would be that if you actually decided, let's not focus on have, holding the victory cup above one's head, Let's not.